We've had one week, two weeks, three weeks, and one day since Joe Biden stepped aside. The only place we've seen Kamala Harris is at, is at pep rally. What's up? Kamala Harris is hiding. Is she doing the Joe Biden bottom of the basement strategy? Somebody tell me something. Welcome to Disturbing the Peace with Pastor John Amanchukwu. Do me a big favor, like, share, and subscribe to my channel. I'm growing slowly but surely. I am inching along. You know, oftentimes I have people tell me, man, I'm surprised that your YouTube channel isn't much bigger than what it is. Well, if you share my messages, if you share the videos, we will grow. And I plan on spending a lot of time on YouTube in the coming months. So do me a big favor, like, share, and subscribe. Thank you. Now, let's get into this situation with Stephen A. Smith telling the truth about Kamala Harris. You know, she's finicky about pronouncing her name right, and I get it. I have a unique last name, but at the end of the day, Kamala Harris, you've been hiding. You have been ducking the American people. What's up with that? You've been quote unquote, the <laughs> unofficial nominee. You know, they love to say that Republicans are a threat to democracy, but at the end of the day, she's now the person tapped for the, to be the president along with Tampon Timmy. And keep in mind, they haven't even gone through a democratic process. So they are the true threat to democracy. Take a look at this video. Check it out. Now, Joe Biden, stepped down, stepped aside uh -huh. as the presumptive Democratic nominee on July 21st, okay? Now, I'm going to look at this right now. I'm looking at my calendar because I just want to make sure. You know, July 21st was a Sunday. We've had one week, two weeks, three weeks, yep. and one day since Joe Biden stepped aside. The only damn place we've seen Kamala Harris is at, is at pep rally. <laughs> What's up? Somebody got to say something. And it can't just be the conservatives. Right is right. I'm talking to my sister here. Come on now. You running for the presidency of the United States of America. You got my vote. You running for the presidency of the United States of America. What you hiding for? What you hiding for? And I mean hiding in plain sight. <laughs> Somebody got to say it. Somebody got to say it. Now, you can't be running for the presidency of the United States. Not one single press conference, not one single one-on-one -on -one sit-down interview where somebody gets to question you right. about the questions that we ask. That's not fair. That's not fair. And if you're a conservative and you out there lambasting based enough for it, ridiculing her for it, trying to torment her for it or whatever. It is perfectly within your right to do so. All of you anti-conservatives out there, shut the hell up. That's a valid point. <laughs> Come ain't on, valid Steven. to bring up a blackness or an Indian heritage and to try to point to things of that nature. That's nonsense. But to ask her about her record, because she does, she is attached to the Biden record, is definitely apropos, especially when you were bragging about the record. Mm -hmm. We talked we talked uh, uh, about Biden, B Biden being a, a, a transformative president. Well, stand on it then. Stand on it. Which, where you at? See, here it is. Stephen A. Smith, once again, a broken clock is right nearly twice a day. Stephen is telling the truth. He doesn't always do that. I don't agree with everything that Stephen A. Smith has to say, but here he is knocking the ball out of the park. Where is Kamala Harris? She's hiding. She's do, doing the Biden basement strategy. That's when you run from the American people, make all of these claims that you have made America better and you've improved the plight of Americans in, in our country, but at the end of the day, you've done nothing. When you go to Kamala Harris's 
uh, campaign website, you won't find one policy. One. Now, she's asking for a lot of money. She's duping people like Stephen A. Smith because at the end of the day, Stephen, if you see that she's running from the media, you work in the media, you, you, you work in journalism, you, you, you've witnessed what, what happens in journalism. You know why people dodge. You know why people hem and harm. You know why people jump from the left and to the right. You know why? Because they don't have anything to say. And so, Stephen, how can you say that she has your vote when she won't even tell the American people what she stands for, let alone you? Now, Stephen, you need to fix that. I, I, I agree with you, Stephen A. Smith, for calling her on the carpet. But you should do more than that. You shouldn't just support this lady solely because maybe you think that she's black and you want to support her for that reason. Because if you're not supporting her for the sake of policies, then why in the world are you saying that she has your vote? If she's, a do if she's dodging the American people for 24 days, Stephen, you are saying that you are an ignoramus because you're giving her your vote and you don't even know what she stands for. She could stand for castrating all men. Stephen, she could stand for, I don't know, men, men, men can't come outside, but only one hour out of the day. <laughs> you know what I mean? We, 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 don't, we don't know what policies are thriving and producing the momentum in the Kamala Harris, Tim Waltz campaign. We don't even know. But Stephen, you said she has your vote. You, you, you got to fix that, brother. There's an article that was recently done on pointer.org. It's an opinion piece. It says, when will Kamala Harris meet the press? Eventually, Harris will have to sit down for a one-on-one -on -one interview or press conference. But so far, so far, not doing so hasn't hurt her. Now, that's strange. That's strange. You know, Trump, you know, the media loves to create narratives about him without him speaking. But keep in mind, he recently did a three hour segment with what many would call the smartest man in the world, Elon Musk. For three hours, he sat there and he answered questions. They had dialogue. Sometimes Elon Musk agreed. Sometimes he didn't. But Trump was able to stand in there for three hours, three hours, and have dialogue and answer the questions that the American people want to hear and answer too. But Kamala Harris doesn't have to do that. And you, you know what? The media is supporting her in her willingness to dodge them. They're saying, well, we know you don't have anything to say. So we're just going to beautify you, beautify your campaign, speak well of you, say that I'm with her, not cover the fact that you've let, along with Joe Biden, 10 million criminal illegal aliens over into America. We're going to overlook the fact that you and Biden, OK, Kamala Harris and Biden, that you all stopped the rebuilding of the wall on day you came into office. We're going to overlook the fact that you all supported the catch and release program that allowed, you know, nearly three, uh, nearly one million illegal aliens to be released. I mean, this whole catch and release thing was a farce. Catch them, release them, and leave them in your country. This makes no sense at all. And then, on the cover of Time Magazine, Time Magazine, we find a picture of Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris. Now she declined to do the interview, but they still put her on the front cover of Time magazine. Take a look at this. And uh, actually, yeah. she looked very much like a great first lady, Melania. <laughs> she looked, she looked, didn't look, yeah. she didn't look like Camilla. That's right. But of course, she's a beautiful woman. So we'll leave it at that, right? She actually, did something. That now this is funny. This is President back. Trump here talking about. Kamala Harris being on the front page of Time 
magazine. You know, Time magazine is very friendly to Democrats and they give Republicans a hard time. But at the end of the day, didn't do the interview, but they still plastered her face on the front cover of Time magazine. And then let's take a look at this, where President Trump talks about Kamala Harris hiding from the media. The honeymoon period's going to look. She's got a little period. She's got a convention coming up. It's about policy. It's not about her. I think she's incompetent. <laughs> because I've watched her. She destroyed California. She destroyed San Francisco. Everything right. she's touched has turned to bad things. I want to use, I'm not going to use foul language. Thank you, President Trump. Everything she's touched has turned bad. She's incompetent. The reason she's not doing what I do, and she's not doing what she should be doing, she won't even do interviews with friendly people. Hold it there. See, he is hitting the nail on the head. Every president, every candidate has to do interviews. You have to. People have questions for you. They already created a stealth plan to make her the nominee before their convention. And now she gets to gallivant about and not go before the media. You know, this this is man. They are wicked. And President Trump is pointing it out. He's, I'm out here doing interviews. At one point, I thought that I was campaigning against Joe Biden. They kicked Joe Biden down the steps, <laughs> all right? And they are now hiding him. And now it's Kamala Harris. And she is the so-called nominee, but she's not even coming before the media. You all know, you all know that there is a fix in. And I do believe this, that the reason why she's allowing these criminal, illegal aliens to come into our country is because they want cheap votes. They're trying to buy support. And that's why they're giving driver's license and IDs to these individuals. They're providing all these resources and funding and all of this government assistance and help because this is their plan to win the election. And within that, Kamala Harris has been the border czar and she has failed the American people woefully and she can't even answer to it. She gets to hide for 24 days. This is insanity. Roll the clip. Because she can't do better than Biden. Now, he had a reason for not doing well. <laughs> and he was never 25 years ago the sharpest or brightest bulb in the ceiling. That I can tell you. <laughs> That's okay? funny. He wasn't. But he could do interviews, at least. Not lately, he couldn't, perhaps. But she's, she should be doing interviews. She doesn't want to do interviews. And the reason she doesn't is, number one, her policies are so bad. Uh, just to answer your question, I think that it's not going to change because it's really ultimately not about her as much as about her policies. Mm. She wants open borders. Yes. She wants to defund the police. She wants to defund the police. Yes. She wants to take away your guns. Yes. Anybody that thinks they're not going to come after your guns. You know, when I was president, I totally protected the guns. And I think it's very important. And I know I take some heat sometimes for it. But you have to have safety. You have to have. You know, one of the ways that communism and Marxism thrives is that it disarms the people. And see, when they start coming after your freedom of speech... The First Amendment, they'll next come after the Second Amendment. And see, all of this self-censorship that takes place today, you have to tone it down. You can't say what you think. You can't say what you believe. You can't say what you feel. If you tell people what you really think, then you might get canceled or deplatformed. If you are honest today, you know, honesty is really not welcomed. People want to be lied to you. They want, they want you to make them feel good. I mean, a person can make an F on a test, but you're supposed to pat them on the back and say, oh, oh, Johnny, oh, Sarah, you, you gave your best effort. No, you failed. And there's a reason why you failed. You probably more than likely, likely did not apply yourself. But we live in a society where we congratulate 
and we uh, look the other way at sheer insanity. And this has become common. It's a common thing that is taking place, especially amongst leftists. You know, one would think that when you look at the mystery platform of Kamala Harris, we know what the platform is. The, the main thing that she's talking about right now is women having the right to take a life, to unalive a baby and supporting criminal illegal aliens. Other than that, she really has nothing to campaign on. And President Trump is making that clear. Roll the footage. When the bad guy walks in with a gun, you got to have some way of protecting yourself. And boy, that would be, you would see crime go up at levels that you've never seen. When people say on this side of the house, this house has guns. We will use the guns. They say, yeah, let's pass. <laughs> That's right. We'll go someplace else. Next house. You have to have them. Uh, and for four years, and you know, as you know, the NRA endorsed me very powerfully every time I ran, every time. My mm -hmm. sons are uh, members, and I guess indirectly I'm a member too. But they gave me the strongest of endorsements, and that's against very strong competition. People that, you know, felt the same way. No, you have to have... Uh, you have to have that right. Uh, our Second Amendment is a very important right. That's right. And it has to be protected. Okay, how about you? Go ahead. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. You have to protect your Second Amendment. And you also have to protect your First Amendment. And they're coming after both. Now, I say to the spineless and weak Christians out there who are, I, I, I just don't like his personality. President Trump is just so brash and assertive. You choose. Do you want a person who won't give you their policies and what they stand for? Or do you want a person who's going to tell you what they stand for? Make it plain. We want to, in the Republican Party, reduce inflation, provide school choice, secure the border, Bring back our ability to be energy independent. We want to reduce the time frame of, of which where one is allowed to abort a baby. Now, I am for, I'll say this uh, clearly so that, so that you know, I am for banning abortion. I do believe that it is a crime. It's illegal. It should be a crime for a mother to unalive her child. And we probably need to have a conversation about prosecuting those who do. You know, that's 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 something that I, you know, am willing to entertain. I'll say it that way, because you can't just go unalive a person when they're two years old. You're going to be, you know, arrested for doing so. If a person takes the life of a mother, you know, um, while she's pregnant with a baby, they're going to charge her for taking two lives. That's what they're going to do, you know? And so when it comes to these things, man, we just have to be true and clear. The Bible says what it says, and we stand for what the Word of God says. We should not support a political party that stands for unaliving children all the way up to nine months. If you want to know the Republican Party platform, it's out there. If you want to know President Trump's platform, it is out there. If you want to know Kamala Harris's platform, I don't know where it's at because she won't even put it on her website. But heretofore, we have known the Democratic Party platform, and it's not good. Well, that's it. You all let me know what you think below. Make a reply. Am I right? Or am I wrong? Am I weak? Or am I strong? Whatever you do, my friends, as you move throughout the course of this day, whatever you do, don't forget to disturb the peace. God bless you.